The signed article uh, published by China Daily by Julius McKay yes. and described you mm. as a uh, uh, well known mm. for your compassion, kindness, and sense of fun. <laughs> but we don't see that much uh, in public. Uh, we are wondering where, where is the, the softer side? The softer side is uh -huh. kept for myself and my family. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I, uh -huh. I rarely uh, used my public service duty mm -hmm. or opportunity to sort of build up my personal profile. So um, I spent every day uh, in my official position just to try to do uh, things for the people of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And very often, as I said on one occasion, I perhaps have sacrificed uh, a bit in my private life because of my public duties. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, I, I wrote in my little book about my relationship with my, um, with my mother. Uh, I did not manage to spend enough time uh, with her before she passed away. And so every time I spent um, a good uh, period of time with her was whenever she was sick and hospitalized. Mm. Then I have that uh, obligation to visit her um, every day after work. Uh, but that's why I do appeal to a lot of uh, people, especially those who are fortunate enough still have their aged parents to really spend more time with their parents. In your manifestos, you um, actually set out a plan mm -hmm. for the education reform, mm -hmm. and in which you call for a stable mm -hmm. and a caring and sparing sure. yes. environment. Yes. I have two prone questions. Mm -hmm. How do you envisage that environment? Mm -hmm. And also, how do you see it as engaging the young people? Yeah. Well, education is very, very important. Yeah. Um, it is the, the best investment that any government um, could do, mm -hmm. is to nurture the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Because the younger generation is our future. So we really want to help our young people um, to grow up as responsible citizens, as uh, citizens who could not only uh, build up their own career, but also could um, contribute back to society. And this time round, I have really benefited from my seven weeks of uh, running this campaign mm. and have uh, quite a number of opportunities to talk to people in the education sector, mm. especially frontline uh, teachers mm. in, in the education sector. And I, I was really very touched by their passion for quality education. Mm and their devotion and their commitment. But at the same time, I heard a lot of worrying stories mm -hmm. about uh, teachers not being given a permanent job. That's why on the 3rd of February, um, when I did not have my full manifesto ready, I already identified education is, as one of the three priorities for the next term of the Hong Kong SL government. And I crafted a, um, a, a set of words to describe uh, my aspiration for education. I want to create for our students, our teachers, our principals, and our parents uh, a stable and caring environment. So 10 days after the 3rd of February, on the 13th of February, I announced that I, I felt very justified to inject more education resources into the system. Mm -hmm. So I announced that as a first bite, uh, if I were elected the next chief executive, I would put in an extra five billion annually recurrent expenditure mm -hmm. to uh, help resolve some of the issues or problems in the education sector. You are viewed as uh, the most experienced of the three candidates, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. the most trusted by mm -hmm. the central government. Mm -hmm. But that presents uh, both advantage and also challenges. Mm -hmm. How do you? Uh, handle the ties with the central government and also deal with the political opposition locally? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, first of all, uh, of course, I, I, I feel very honored uh, mm -hmm. if uh, the central people's government <coughs> has uh, trust and faith in me. Mm -hmm. But I just want to make it very clear that uh, that sort of trust in a um, chief executive candidate or in um, a public official in the Hong Kong SAL government was built on very solid foundation. Mm -hmm. It's not because they particularly like me or because I'm a woman that they, 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 they felt that uh, they want to uh, trust me or they want to uh, have me as an ex-chief executive. 
But uh, anyone who looked at my working history, especially in my position as the Chief Secretary for Administration, which is the number two in the Hong Kong SL government, uh, would realize that I have very solid experience working with the Central People's Government and also with the provincial governments. Uh, for 20 months in the, uh, this term of the Hong Kong ASL government, I, I led a task force to work on constitutional development. So in those discussions, I have to work with the uh, central people's government, uh, relevant authorities and so on. So in those interactions, they will know what sort of person uh, I am and the core values I have and uh, how I have fully reflected the views of the Hong Kong people. At the provincial level, uh, within the Hong Kong SL government, I was as a CS, the chairman of a steering committee to oversee uh, co cooperations between the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government mm -hmm. and various parts of um, the, the uh, Central People's Government as mm -hmm. well as the provincial authorities. Uh, it was not sort of uh, just a very subjective uh, preference for a person. Uh, it is that sort of trust and faith um, is, in my view, built on very solid uh, foundation.